Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Milo, so good to see you again, man. Welcome back to the show. Katie, thanks for having me back. Good to see oh, you. It, it's so good to see you. You know, last time we talked, we were talking about Zombies 3. Now we're talking School Spirits. We're two for two for talking about projects where your character is not alive, right? I know. And also that plays football, by the way. I'm yes, I know. I'm a football player. It makes no <laughs> sense. Uh, I know. I, they've they've typecast me. There's a the niche. You, you, have, yeah. you, you have the niche, right? Absolutely. The Milo Man have niche. Um. It's interesting. One of the things I loved about this show, including your character, is, you know, a lot of the spirits are from different kind of eras, different time periods and everything. So did you see that as kind of a unique kind of experience from an acting storyteller perspective, playing a character from the past in like a current, like present setting? Like I find that was unique, right? Totally. Um, first of all, I was super grateful to be from the 80s, which was such a cool era with amazing music and amazing movies. I was only listening to 80s music when I was up in Vancouver shooting this. But first of all, I don't think it's been done before necessarily where it's people from different time periods living at the same age in the afterlife. Like, I don't I don't think that concept has ever been explored. But I think it's really cool because, A, obviously you see the differences between all, all these different people and they're, they've contrast very strongly, but also the universal similarities of the high school struggles that we all go through, whether you're from 2023 or the, from the 60s, um, all the characters can relate to each other in some way. And I think that as a viewer, um, you can relate to the characters as well, even if you haven't been in high school. I don't know. If, mm. I don't know if the show is directed towards those people that haven't been in high school yet or if you just never went to high school, but I think that just from a, a human level, every character has something that we can all feel, especially at least me and Wally, we had a connection where it was really easy for me to take aspects of my own life and apply them to that character. I I I I found a strong connection with him, which was surprising because I didn't know who he was going to be. I only had the first two episodes when I agreed to do the show. And yeah. as the show went on, I, I became super. There might or might not be a football stadium named after your character. Let's be honest. I mean, it's a big deal. Might or might not. They got to find out and see. But like, it's. You got to watch it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Wally Clark football stadium has a ring to it. If Wally Clark <laughs> stadium, I like that. If they haven't named it that, they should. It's, it's interesting to see my little the balance i don't know i feel like because we talked about this last time for zombies 3 about like how you can actually prepare yourself for a lot of things kind of thrown in scripts right because i feel like this guy's kind of has a lot thrown at the audience right away and i feel like there's a really cool balance of the who done it kind of component where we're on the edge of our seat trying to figure out as a detective who did this right but then also the characters the spirits and the classmates there's so fleshed out like right away. And I'm just curious if you've kind of noticed that kind of balance and push a pull with like who did the murder. Right. And how like these character developments. Right. Cause there's like a balance of both in this, in the show, in my opinion. Yeah, not only did I notice that that was one of my driving forces for wanting to be a part of this project. Um, I think it's, first of all, I like love puzzles and I love like solving things. I also obviously love cinema. I'm an actor and this is like both of those things together. I've always loved murder mysteries. I always read murder mystery books growing up. And um, I don't know, I feel like it's, it's awesome to be able to explore this like aspect of, it's like two completely different genres together. And um, I don't know, I just think that the, uh, for me that's like one of my favorite parts about this show and uh you it's something else that's interesting is i only got to experience one aspect of it which is the afterlife and there's so much more that happens in the real world and while yes yeah. i got to read these in the table reads i didn't ever see them come to life with the incredible cast that we have i never saw saw them bring it to its feet so i'm really excited to watch the show myself and see what they did with all that but this cast is incredible and they, I think we do an amazing, we, myself, I don't I, I mean more so my other cast members. Um, I think they do an amazing job, like keeping it interesting and on its feet, but also keeping the humanity. And like when you, you really take a deep dive into these characters lives and it just makes you so much more emotionally invested and involved. 
It's like you knew I was going to ask that. Are you playing a psychic in your next project or something? Like, you hit that out of the park, man. I'm always playing, like, supernatural characters. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I will be a psychic in my next one. Well, it's interesting you say that because you look at, like, Wally's very kind of involved with kind of the afterlife kind of support group and everything and kind of, like, has like kind of has that circle that he stays in. But I find it interesting because, like, like you said, you, Christian's character, Spencer's character kind of have this push and pull with, like, the spirit and like the classmates and everything and i do find that's kind of interesting a dynamic that you said that um let's talk about kind of the aesthetic and kind of getting ready for the 80s a little bit you kind of mentioned the listening to a lot of music and everything what were some of the bands specifically because i mean you know me i'm a i'm, I'm a big fan Meg, when i interviewed meg for um american oh, yeah? housewife we just talked about music the whole time we talked about like slipknot and like what they do and everything I, so i'm, I'm getting music. my i'm getting my wally playlist up right now um it, it's real by the way wally and i would wally. listen to this, i would listen to this every day i at first i did it just to go into set or to listen to in my trailer to get into character but then i just loved the music it's such a great like soundtrack like walking Man. around um, I'm gonna just read you like the first couple of things. Take on me, dancing with myself, um, the safety dance. Love that song. Classic. Compact, Men with own hats, like, absolutely. Compact. That's a classic. What I like about you was I don't even. That's 80s, right? I that was like um, one of my most played songs. Whip it, come on, Eileen. Diva. Oh man, <laughs> world. Like uh, some of these songs are a little outside the 80s, but they like have the 80s feel. But um, yeah, man, it was. I, I was I was familiar with a lot of the 80s movies. Yeah, but I uh, I never really explored the '80s music like that, and that was one of the coolest things. But also, just watching those movies, and for me as an actor, like uh, one of my favorite things is like the challenge of finding your character's physicality and making it different from a different character. And and I think like Wally, you know, he's super laid back. He's always back in his chair. He's messing with his hair. Like those shorts, those shorts, yeah, the athletic the shorts. shorts. They're awesome, man. By far the comfiest outfit I've ever had in any role that I've ever played and probably will ever have. I got to wear sweatpants every day. He had no to say, yeah. So, yeah, dude, Wally, he was a delight to play. And please watch the show because I want to do a season two so I can be him again. I love him so much. Uh, the, it, 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 it is. Real. When do you kind of start? It's funny, too, because when do you start, like, cluing in when you're reading the script for this? Because there's, like, you worked on a lot of projects that, in my opinion, like you have to be an active kind of member audience wise because you have to pay attention because you'll miss things that you want. Right. And then you've been in stuff where people can kind of just watch with some pizza and their phones and everything. Totally. Like this one, like you really have to pay attention. Like put the phone away for this one. They're not going to, they can't watch your your TikTok videos that are amazing. Like they got to watch the show, put the phone like away. School spirits here and like doing this. And you don't want to do that. And you don't have to because everything is really intriguing. I meant to answer this in your first question. I know we throw a lot at you in the first episode, but we're creating a very complex universe for you where we can explore really complex, weird things. You know what that I mean? That first episode is packed. Like yeah. it's packed. <laughs> it totally is. It totally is. And I'm sorry on one hand, but on the other hand, I'm we're setting up a show that is super interesting. And like, and I, I like, I, I don't know if I had mentioned this before, but I only, I only had the first two episodes when I got to do this or when I agreed to do this rather. And I figured it out as we went on. I had a freaking board like on my room wall, like with pictures of everybody's faces, connecting the dots, like connecting yarn together. <laughs> And like trying to figure yeah, you're it out. Playing, you're playing. You're You're a detective too. Like the actors are detectives. Totally, a hundred percent. But I'd say Milo, the person, was more invest. Besides Maddie, maybe was more invested in solving this murder than anybody else. But and I, I wasn't even close. When we got to the finale, I was so surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised, and shocked, and um. You know, I just had trust that we were going to a place that was cool. I mean, like, I, uh, you know, I just, I know that the writers are amazing and I knew that they were going to whip something up that was really cool and they did. And it was nice to know that all of our hard work went towards something that was really satisfying in the end. Absolutely. So well said. March 9th, episode streaming on Paramount Plus School Spirits. Milo, so good to see you again, man. Thank you so much for your time. You too. Thank you for your time. This has been like my favorite interview today. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
Thank you for tuning in to Poptternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Poptternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.